Hello and welcome back. I'm Adam with Push the Envelope, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. Today we're going to be talking about, again, one of the more common machine learning models, and that is logistic regression. Now, if you've heard of linear regression before, you may be thinking that this is close to what that is. Uh, now, there are some similarities and some things that go along with it, but it definitely is a different sort of machine learning. So uh, stay tuned to this video to figure out those differences. And without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive into what logistic regression is and how we can use it. Okay, like always, we're going to start introducing logistic regression by working through an example problem. Now, the first thing I want to cover, though, is for those who don't know what linear regression is, I kind of just want to do a quick high level because there are some common themes here that we are going to need to address. So if you remember or if maybe you've never seen this before, I do have another video that goes through linear regression. I recommend you go check that out before you go through this video, but high level overview, you are trying to map a line, this red line right here, to some data points to minimize your errors as seen in those yellow uh, lines right there. And now the graphic is of a one feature to an output, but you can do this for as many features that you have by using that bottom equation there by mapping weights to the input features and adding a bias. So this doesn't necessarily work with logistic regression because logistic regression is not predicting continuous points, but it's back to using classification. So if I have a, an example data set right here, and we are trying to predict the blue and the red classes. Now, if I try to fit a linear regression line, it doesn't work. So we need to use a different approach. So instead of using that line, we are going to do something like thresholding, where we're just trying to get some threshold value, say anything above it is going to be the red class, anything below it is going to be the blue class, and obviously there's going to be some errors in between there, but we're trying to just minimize those errors and come up with the best possible solution. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to take the data and we're going to try to structure it a different way so that it looks like this, where the blue class is down on the y equals zero line, and the red class is up somewhere like y equals one. And you may recognize this as binary classification because it's exactly what it is. We are mapping these points to some label, which in this case is zero and one. But how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we want some sort of line that looks like this, where the features in the middle, you know, they may, be closer to like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, somewhere around there. But as you get farther out, uh, it's more confident being zero class or the one class, depending on what side you're on. And this line is going to be called our activation function. Now, you may have heard of activation function before, but we are going to be using the sigmoid function to give us this line right here. So this little S-shaped line is sigmoid and sigmoid is equal to one over one plus e to the negative x and so again we're just trying to map those features to look like this where we're predicting some output class as a value from zero to one in this case for binary classification so how do we do that well we're going to take the y hat values so again the predicted values and those are going to be equal to like the linear regression the weights times the input features for however many that you have. But what we're going to do is we're going to pass all of that through our activation function in order to make it look like this. And that's all logistic regression is. Now again, the name or the regression in the name logistic regression is a little misleading uh, because it's not linear regression. It's not predicting continuous lines. It's back to predicting classes and doing classification tasks. But it is taking some of the same properties of linear regression and using them in order to start mapping those classes by using this activation function. So that is all for logistic regression. I again am going to be using these in example videos that I'll link to. Uh, I'm also going to be making logistic regression models from scratch so that you can see some of the underlying math and how you may be able to implement some of your own. Uh, so stay tuned for those. If you got anything out of this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And again, stay tuned for those videos of me actually using this model. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time.